Hey everyone, so before I start the homebrew update, I just kind of want to tell you one important tip when recording audio. Make sure you have the microphone facing the correct way, you know, towards you, not away from you. So, yeah. Um, luckily, my, well, let me just first say this. This is the microphone I actually got for Christmas. I haven't said that yet before I was using this guy. I actually had my brother Zoom H3, I think it is, which is an amazing microphone, but I wanted to have my own, so I got this Blue Yeti for Christmas. But yes, uh, make sure you have it facing the correct way, or else it sounds like you are very far away, such as this. Hello everyone, welcome to another homebrew. Now, once you heard that, Let's go ahead and get with the video and you'll see the major difference of my camera microphone versus what I had recorded today through this guy. Hello everyone, welcome to another homebrew update. This is the very first one of the new year and I've got to tell you we have a whole bunch of amazing stuff already happening such as Linux on the PS4 and a popular Xbox team going over to the Nintendo Switch. Let's go ahead and get started with this amazing news. One of the very many things that Nintendo consoles bring us as far as homebrew is the popular homebrew launcher. The Wii U had one, the Wii had one, and the 3DS had one. But now the Nintendo Switch will also have one. Yes, you'll be able to do your own homebrew easily now, but it hasn't been released yet. The release date will be on February 1st, at least that is what a screenshot says and that is what one of the developers actually said as well. This part is really mainly for the developers, it will be able to use the LibNX and the Lib Transistor libraries, which is so again only really meant for developers, that's the actual coding libraries that is used to compile the homebrew itself. As you can tell in the screenshot, it is kind of gray and white. That's really all the colors you see. I'm really hoping they bring back the whole wavy blue thing into there, like the Wii U and the 3DS had, really all the homebrew channels had. Because, I mean, I feel like that's a staple of the homebrew channel is to expect some nice music and expect some blue waves. And next up is something that I definitely didn't see coming, and I don't think a lot of people actually saw coming. The popular Xbox group team executor has actually gone over to dive into the Nintendo Switch scene. Yes, they actually even released a video of them hacking the Nintendo Switch and showing what all you could do. Well, not really showing what all you could do, they mainly just changed the boot logo. They made it say instead of Nintendo, they changed it to Executor, which is still amazing. Um, essentially, that is saying that they do have a boot access or boot file access, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, and they could run exploits at the very beginning of the actual Nintendo Switch powered on, which is amazing. Now, non Team Executor with their Xbox mods and their Xbox 360 mods, this will not be free. Everything they've done has always been mod chip related or hardware related, meaning with the Nintendo Switch, it probably will not be an exception. But the great news of this is not only do they have a boot process, they also are able to confirm it will work on all firmware. And also it will not be patched by Nintendo, meaning it probably is something hardware related because they could always patch stuff in the software, but when it comes to hardware related, they will not be able to patch that unless they come out with a whole new revision of the Nintendo Switch. And also if the video didn't prove it enough, they also did release the stage two boot key. Now I really don't know what this is, but some of the developers um, are already on the Nintendo Switch have confirmed this is the actual stage two boot key that Team Executor has posted. So I feel like that just gives more truth to them actually working on the Nintendo Switch now and saying that what they have now is actually proof. As far as release date goes for this Team Executor exploit mod chip, whatever you want to call it, they did put in the video saying sometime in 2018, whether that's the beginning of 2018 or the end of 2018, my guess is gonna be the latter due to probably the fact that they do have to manufacture the mod chips. Again, we don't know if it's 100% fact mod chips, but the way Team Executor works, it probably is. 
Over on the PlayStation 4, we have a lot of new releases thanks to the exploit release of Spectre Dev. The very first one I'm going to be talking about is what they call the PS4 Exploit Host. This will actually let you host the exploit on your own computer and then send it off to the PlayStation 4 so that way you can have all the files hosted normally. I mean, it's like really any other homebrew nowadays. You have to have it hosted on your own computer with the files and then you send it off to the actual switch, usually through a DNS, you know, you connect it through the yeah, all that stuff. Anyway, the PS4 exploit host is made by Al Azif, and this just makes it really easy for you to run the exploit yourself on your device. We've also got a handy way to let people who've never connected to PSN uh, use the web browser, because you know, nothing says Sony like blocking stuff on your own game console until you use PSN itself. Yes, that's right guys, if you do not connect to PSN, you will not be able to use the web browser, but there are ways around it. I will have a link in the description of a tutorial on how to actually get this working. So what it is though, I haven't actually said what exactly this thing is. It is a web browser perma patch. So it will let you use the web browser on your system whether or not you have connected to PSN which is awesome news because it's a lot easier to use the exploit this way by just you know going to one icon instead of going through a multiple different icons to get to the web browser. The tutorial in the link below will tell you how to install the perma patch on the PS4 as well as run the actual PlayStation 4 exploit all by yourself. So just follow the tutorial, it's by wololo.net, I highly, highly trust them, and if you just follow it, you should be all good to go. And once you've got the PS4 web browser exploit and all that, you can also try out the FTP service someone actually made. Yes, you can now do an FTP thing, but really, the only good use for it right now is to delete the PS4 update nag. Yes, you can actually delete the actual PS4 update file, that is on the PS4 and then it will say, hey, since this file's not there, I'm not gonna show you this very annoying nab that pops up every single time you start the PlayStation. Yeah. Um, now, just be very, very careful with FTP servers though, guys. If you do not know what you're doing, you are very liable to break your system. And that is the last thing you wanna do with your newly exploited system. All right, so we've got the PS4 exploit host. We've got the PS4 web browser perma patch, and we also got the FTP service. What else is next? Well, you know, Linux, of course. Yes, you can run Linux on your PS4. It has been known that you can run Linux on your PS4 for quite a while now, ever since a Chinese exploit or something like that got released and a video got released showing you could run Linux, but now anyone can do it. Well, there's a little star there saying no, not everyone can do it. It's one of those things that you have to try out yourself and see if it works for you. As far as the steps goes, it is quite a few steps, but it's something that if you are really willing to try, I mean, why not try it? I myself probably will try it once I finally update my PS4 up to 4.05. I am actually still waiting to see more export releases though before I do so. Oh, and I actually just remembered, I did forget one thing on the Nintendo Switch. The reason why I forgot this one thing is because it was released late last night and it is not actually in my script. So I'm gonna say it right now, there has been a beta video or leaked video of a new Switch firmware. It is Switch Firmware 5.0 and it is showing that there is an internet browser. You can actually put folders now and it's also showing applications such as YouTube, Hulu, and other things like that. So it's really cool that they're finally adding like, you know, an internet browser into the actual Switch system firmware so that you can actually access it easily. I would still recommend not to update because I'm sure this fixes a lot of other patches as well that you cannot use for exploit reasons. And as always, I'll also be linking the thread to GBA Temp as well as the video down into the description below so you could actually watch the video yourself. And you can make heads or tails of it. Again, it is a leak. It's really right now also just a rumor. But given the fact that on January 11th, there will be a Nintendo Switch Nintendo Direct, I have a feeling this thing is actually quite true. All right, guys, and that is it for this video. Now, for only being two consoles to actually talk about this has been a lot of good information and I guys I hope you really did enjoy all the information I took to try and find for you all all right so 
Now to answer last week's video question thing, what is your New Year's resolution? My New Year's resolution? Well, um, I don't have one. I, I never make New Year's resolutions because I never actually keep to them. So I, I, I don't have one. As for this week's question, what do you think of Team Executor releasing a exploit on the Nintendo Switch? Specifically, what do you think if it's going to be, you know, a free exploit or if you're going to have to pay for it, if it's going to be a mod chip? And if you will have to pay for it, what do you think about that? There is a lot of controversy on that because a lot of people say homebrew should be free or things like that. But if it's hardware related, you're going to have to pay for it anyway. Please tell me what you think in the comments below. This is one question I actually will not be answering next video because I'll actually be answering it with the comments and you all guys and I'll be discussing it all there as you write comments. And that's it for this video guys. I'm so glad you came to watch this video and I hope all of your new years has started great. I mean, my has. I mean, I actually got snow here in South Carolina. That's kind of an oddity. It's, it's rare, but I'm very happy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button and that little bell icon next to it so you don't miss a video whenever I post one. Whether it's music video, uh, you know, me doing my own arrangement or the homebrew update. With that said, I will see you next video.